Arroyo del Corral. Arroyo del Corral. Okay, cool. And the next drainage over is Arroyo del Corral. The, I mean, on the over across the bluff? Yeah. See how there's that bridge there? Oh, there's okay. This bridge. Okay. So that that okay. one's more subtle and doesn't necessarily flow all the time. Gotcha. Where this one constantly has water in it. Cool. But it doesn't it doesn't break free until right around now. See how the, what the, the surf is washing up? So when we started this project, it was just a, a, basically a plunge pool and a box culvert where the water went through. And so there's this one stagnant piece of water and it's all just sand right here. And so when we were gonna start the job and we we're gonna build that bridge, we had to remove that box culvert eventually. So what we did is we fenced this area and we used posts like this on the corners which we found out that's a big no-no. Um, it wasn't my call or anything. <laughs> but when the surf came up, it picked up the, the, the post, floated out of the ground. As you can imagine, the capillaries pushed it right out, and all these seals ended up getting through the culvert and getting over into here. And you can see they, since then, they've been just, just widening it. And right there where they were building the bridge, is, they, um, it got wider. So when they did the studies, whatever, 10, 20 years ago, um, top of bank to top of bank or ordinary high water mark, however you want to look at it, was it's different. So all their plans they bid on and stuff, like that, you know, it was just this constant battle with the construction guys and stuff. So huge erosive forces, these these uh, elephant seals. So if we get like a, a, a good couple inch of rain after it's like this, after the water's come up and washed in, it basically becomes like a lagoon or whatever, the water will push out and next thing you know, the water will go from being four feet, you know, it's like probably like this deep to, I don't know, maybe a couple feet and it'll be crystal clear. There won't be any seals in there because they can't move around up in there when it's all shallow. I mean, they can, but then you'll start to see fish, high water gobies, which is, you know, sensitive fish. And then, and then when that starts to dry up and you get the, you know, basically the um, pond scum, so to speak, on the top, when you get all the frogs there'll be thousands of frogs sitting on top of that that algae um, so there's a lot of and basically we have these protection fencing they call it urtec fencing which mm -hmm. has like a little lip that mm -hmm. keeps the frogs in the creek so they don't jump over and uh we didn't really lose any frogs but they're around and we definitely had to keep the, the creek areas clean i mean over there where you can see that you got the jamea or whatever right, growing right, right, right there right, right. like that was all a construction zone, and they had to drill, like, you know, I forget how, 100 feet down, and this big caisson build up. And that bridge over there is done completely different. It's just a different system. They used timbers, made it, you know, a pier, and they built it off that pier. So where was PCH before the redo here? See that? You can basically see that white, the white fence. So it was where the white fence? That's like the okay. west fence. Okay, okay. So it's basically so like right there. Went straight through here, and you gotcha. see like right there where it's like it looks like the road is there. Right. And so there was another fox culvert over there. So there was two of them, and red-legged frogs were there constantly. So you had to move them if once they start demoing this stuff, you had to be there and relocate them if you can. The elephant seals seem to prefer this to PCH. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They love this. So what we're seeing here, you guys, all the obviously all the complexity of the permitting and the and the complexity of, of constraints because of hydrology or constraints because of endangered species or whatever. But then of course there's also just the how do we deal, you know, again not not just the permitting, but just the logistics of how do you physically deal with it when you have a bunch of these you know large mammals that want to push in and, and mess with your construction site. So what happened is when all the seals got got past the fencing they're all over there underneath the bridge and stuff and the pups were in there too and the pups would get up on the bank so what we had to do is work with the uh, national marine the sanctuary folks right and nymphs and u.s fish and wildlife service to more bay marine mammal center would help us come out and relocate seals with their methodology and you're saying some of the seals they're all sometimes, up there in those willows. Right? Yeah, in those wheels, but also sometimes all the way up on the other side of up by the construction headquarters and stuff. Sometimes they went they 
went, went through there and along Hearst Properties fence line all the way over there where they took the houses. So like a mile or so away. It's about a mile. Yeah. And, um, so what we did was we put these grates on both sides of the, um, the box culvert. Once we got them out of here, we had to like literally carry these pups that we could, you know, couldn't get out of the willows. We had to go rescue them, put them in dog crates and take them and, and get them. They took them somewhere up north get where it is somewhere near San Francisco or something. Cool, cool. But uh, yeah, it was, it was quite a relocation effort. And then once we got them over onto this side, they could start building the bridge. Cool, cool. They had to be 100 feet from them. And then how long did the uh, the bridge itself was a two year deal? That was about a year. Construction a year, okay. Claire, do you have a question? No. Oh, I thought you were raising your hand. No, I'm blocking the sun. Oh, blocking the sun. Okay. Yeah, we did the bridges first and then we uh, demoed the road. And then, and Mindy's, uh, I think she's been working with the restoration guys to mm. get it restored. Cool. So they asked for my recommendations for all that stuff when I was monitoring. I just said, make, you know, get, get as low as possible so you get your wetland vegetation. Yeah. Where the road was in almost pretty much, it wasn't in the wetland, it was up on a berm, but over there, you know, it's, it's pretty complicated. So I think they're still dealing with the re effort. Non natives taking over. They totally. have um, um, what they call burr clover. So they, they brought out goats to try and control the burr clover, and then we did spraying and all that stuff. Cool. A lot going on in this one creek here. Questions? Do you guys have any questions about uh, dealing with uh, bridge relocation and construction and all that kind of stuff? So did you just close PCH during the time that the no, it, uh, constructed? no, it stayed open the whole time. Wow. So basically, uh, we had like a haul road going up to these bridges. So we had, at, you know, starting the road, we got to where we could build the bridge. This remained open the whole time so people could drive. And then eventually, you move the traffic over right down there, kind of just past the lighthouse. Um, so once once we get them onto this, the new roadway, then we can start demoing the road and the box culverts and all that stuff that was here. So. All the demo of the road happened last. And obviously the restoration of it. Totally. Uh, we're in the middle of the old highway right now. So you can see where that fence line is. Can you see back? So all of this was pavement. And the concept here was we were supposed to restore down there along the, the bank um, that was where you know the culvert was right where the water was and we were supposed to restore this to sort of this wetland prairie habitat and uh, when they took up the pavement they removed a whole bunch of this asphalt that was here and then they put down the compost and everything like that and we've been having a heck of a time getting wetlands to reform where they thought they would form and all of Over. Yeah. And um, we were supposed to restore native prairie and, and, and um, so native grassland and forbs and um, wetlands in, in the lower parts here. And getting, you know, thinking what you think the hydrology is going to do and what you think the plants <laughs> will do versus what actually happens. And it's just been a struggle. These um, competing the weeds or you know getting the weeds out of here so that we can grow the native plants so we came out and we sprayed a whole bunch of this with herbicide last last spring uh, to try and combat this uh, burr clover so, and we're going to come back in and we're going to drill seed this but now I see that you know so much of the seed is just starting up again but this is year three that we've been trying to restore this and we put so many different things to try and do this. Uh, this will be the third reseeding that we're going to do in the contracts ending th this winter, uh, the construction contract for the restoration phase. So we're hoping it, it works. <laughs> All right, so that's, that's the first stop here in the tour. It wasn't highway.
wire, wherever that you don't, they, they were able, it's better for animals not to have the barbed wire. Um, but the field fencing on the bottom was to keep the elephant seals from getting onto the highway. It works sometimes. <laughs> Tighter, you guys, tighter. Um, this right here is a uh, coastal, wet coastal prairie. Believe it or not, the, we, the, the term wet is a very um, broad term. <laughs> it's, 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 uh, is that see, there's, a, there's a little bit of a perched water table, uh, there's a little bit of a hard pan underneath this. And so you get um, where you get the seepage coming down off the slopes and it sort of settles in here. And what we have here is Danthelia californica and, and uh, sorry, California oak grass, which is a facultative, a native wetland bunch grass. So you can see the bunch grass you kind of plant in here and here. And then there's a lot of uh, blue eyed grass, which is another, I think it's a facultative wetland plant. And even this, um, this, uh, Plantago, thank you, Sunny. Lanceolata, right? Isn't it yeah, Lanceolata? it's not native, but it's a facultative wetland plant. This is what we're, we were aiming for. <laughs> This class has not talked about that. So facultative means that sometimes it'll grow in wetlands, sometimes it'll go in uplands. Um, this is a non-native one that's perennial and very persistent and it really likes disturbance. This was the old highway. Uh, so we've been having a heck of a time getting the natives that we wanted to, the, the bunch grass and the blue-eyed grass to grow in this type of setting. Part of it is we didn't grade it, it didn't get graded low enough. The other part is that um, it was an old highway with, you know, they took down three feet of fill or something like that, two or three feet of fill and they replaced it with compost and, and soil. But even then, you know, there could be so much gravel and fill in here that it's just not working well. It's really complicated. We don't know I think it has a lot to do with not getting graded low enough, but it could all, and, and how complex, you know, the little micro bit of hydrology is in these parts. But there could be more to the story that we just don't know about. It's very complicated. We would have these meetings, um, and some people come out with how trans, and I would recommend that they grade lower. I, tell them, I, would, I would tell them just that, and I remember we would kind of argue about it. I won't say who I was arguing with, <laughs> So the argument was they wanted it higher, so it was more a little bit more draining or something. No, what, what? Just more less, work. Uh, more work. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. More gotcha. 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 Yeah. Logistics and we had gotten out of here, and it was just right. 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 So you get a lot more natural water here and the restoration is doing much better here. There's Frankenia, there's Desticulus, there's... So almost everything that you see here was planted and it's growing in. Planted from uh, 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 starts or from yeah, seed? Yeah, so I'm going to get it. It's really interesting how okay. we got to 
is a monitoring plot. So this is just to tell me that where the center of my monitoring plot is. So I, we're monitoring the restoration progress from the natural, you know, so we're comparing what's over there with what's here. Um, to, to plant this area, they did something here that is not usually done for Caltrans. I don't know, it, it's, it's often not done, but we took big plugs from over there and we put them over here. I mean, they were like one foot square plugs. So we took the native, so rather than growing them out in a nursery, which is um, time consuming and you get these little small plants and it takes a long time. So we decided we'd try that. And it was in these areas where you have good hydrology, it was really successful. Albeit, uh, Barrett was, was talking about the grading. This area wasn't low enough. During the restoration phase of the project, we hired a contractor to come out here and take down about a foot and a half. <laughs> and so one of the reasons that works, you guys, because a lot of these wetland plants are rhizominous and they, they vegetatively expand really quickly. They can go from seed, but, but they really are really good get in and then expand out, really good occupiers of, of the area. So you can, you can plug it in like hair club for men or something, and then pretty soon everybody has a full head of hair kind of thing. Yeah, and this has taken off in the past year even. It's just, it's just amazing how much. I mean, Sunny and I were out here last spring, and it didn't look this fabulous. So it's just cool. Really, it it's looks great. To me, it looks great. I know. It looks almost like the natural area. We can go over there. This would really do well. So we had them take from a variety of things over there. I don't know if you can see where there's more of the broadleaf um, towards the fence line. That's this potilla. And so you, every now and then out here, you see some of the plugs that were um, taken from further afield. Uh, you got this um, Xenoplectus here. Uh, so I can see ones, you know, some of the plugs and the, and the pieces of sod that we got from elsewhere that maybe aren't doing as well as what's just right next to here. So, so it wasn't black, but it's the structure that it's, it's a color. Right there, yeah. That almost looks like a person pushing it up. Some part of the parks has their ideas of where they want to put a, 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 pro, 
project coming through and so they start to do something and then we're like, oh well. <laughs>